Do you want to know how I built this scroll trigger showcase section inside Elementor? Well, in this video, I will show you how I did it from scratch, so you can go ahead and steal it for your next web design project. We only need a few lines of code to achieve this. Now, what's really cool about this section is that it's actually part of a bigger Elementor project. It's an Elementor website template packed with scroll trigger GSAP animations, as you can see. It's perfect for anyone who just wants to skip the design headache and save hours of work. Take a look at this section, for example. Everything you see was made without an external plugin, just Elementor. But for now, let's just focus on the showcase section. So I will go inside the Elementor editor. And as you can see, here is the section. I will just delete it so we can build it together from scratch. All right, so first step, create a new container. And again, I totally get it if you just want to get going and import this template. And that's why I made it possible for you to just buy it and import it directly into Elementor. I'll leave the link in the description. But for those of you who just want to build this from scratch, let's continue. So the section we just made or the container should be boxed and the width should be view width and 100. And the height should be this view height and 150. So now we have a lot of space to scroll upon. And the direction should be down and let's just center or justify the content center and align items center. And down here in gaps, just change it from, from the default 20 to 40. And then go ahead and find additional options because we want this overflow to be hidden. All right. Go into style and let's give it a background color. I like to use this background color, but you can use anything you like. Okay, go into advanced and remove the margin. And here in CSS class, you need to insert a class. And I actually just made a link where you can find all the classes and the code we have to insert later in the video. So the first class is just this main class. I'll go back and just type in main. Great, so that's our main container. So I will recommend that you go ahead and find this structure or navigator. So you just have an overview of what we are building. So this container, I will call it main container. And I really recommend that you do the same. I'll just close these because it will be so much easier to follow this video when you have an overview over here and you can compare it to mine. Okay, next up, let's create the container with all the images. And by the way, you can download all the images I've used in this video in the link in the description also. So let's go back and add in a new container. I'll just drag it in here. And again, name this row. Make sure it's full width and 100 percentage and center content. In gaps, we'll just give it 40. And then go into advanced. Let's just scroll down so we can see the section here and give this a CSS class. Again, this is the class number two called row. I don't know why you can't copy each. So I'll just go ahead and type it myself. Row. Go ahead and add the images now. I'll just add the first image and choose it here. This mountain image. Go into style and set this alignment to left and change the width. Let's just say it should be 87. This will depend on your image but I'll just set it to 87 for now. It will change uh, in a moment when I insert a new image. So the border radius should be 30 pixels and then go into advanced and make sure the set index is set to six. You will see why later in the video. And then we need to give it a CSS class. So I'll go back to the link and just find this card card left and write it here, card card left great now we can duplicate this image and i see i actually made a small mistake because these images should be beside each other so inside this row container we need to set this direction to right so now you see it's much better okay let's go ahead and edit the image that we just duplicated because we need to change something here I'll just click on it and go into style and make sure this is the alignment of right. And again, the width depends of the image. I will just insert the 
new image and see the difference. I'll just give this maybe 83. There you go. And then its border range is 30. That's correct. And in the CSS class, we need to change this to right. All right. So now we can just go ahead and find this row container and duplicate it two times. And then we just need to change each image. I will just quickly do that. All right. So now it's beginning to look like the final result, but something is missing. And that is the center content, the text and the Lottie animation. So I'll just go ahead and add that in. So go ahead and add in a new container and make sure this container is at the top. It should not be inside the other rows. It needs to be inside. Uh, the main container but at the top of the main container like that so i'll just name this um, main content and inside this container we'll just make this uh, 600 pixels wide center center and the gap should just be 10. and then i'll drag in uh, the heading and add text and Actually, we also have an image on the final result, which is just this like that. And uh, of course, a button and the Lottie animation. I'll just search for the Lottie widget and insert it here. And I'll also leave this uh, in the, the description or this uh, link. Uh, you can download the Lottie file right here. So the Lottie file would just be inserted like this. You can see the Lottie file until you actually publish the uh, website. So I'll just go inside style and I know this, the size should be 360. And inside advanced, the padding should just be 200. So there is some space. Okay, I'll just fast forward and give this a style makeover like this. By the way, let me know in the comment if you don't know how to make this multiple color heading. I'll just quickly explain it, but let's not waste any time here. So next step is to just find this main container, click on it. And I thought I made it 600 pixels, but maybe something happened. I don't know why, but it should be 600 pixels and set to center and center and 10 gaps and then go into advanced and find position and change this to absolute and scroll down and let's just set this to 50 uh it should be in percentage 50 percentage and down here 25 and also in percentage and this one should be left and top all right so scroll down a bit and find this transform here you'll need to click on offset and change this to percentage also write minus 50 <clears throat> And down here in the Y, also insert 25. And this should just be in pixels, but this needs to be 25 minus. So now you can see it's centered. Actually, let's move it up a bit. So I'll just type in 50 here. And one last thing in this container, go to layout. I just forgot it and change the set index to four. So we know that it will always be behind these images. All right, now we only need one more thing. And this is actually where the magic happens because now we need to insert the code that animates everything. So again, let's scroll up to the top and insert the last container where the code should be. I'll just drag it in. And it's sometimes a bit difficult to let Elementor know that I want it at the top. All right. so. That's perfect. I'll just name this container HTML or just code maybe. Let's just name it code and drag it uh, to the top. This does not make a difference. It's just easier to get an overview. So inside this container, let's go in and search for the HTML widget and drag it in. Go to my link and copy everything on this copy button and insert it. Let's publish it and see if it's working. I'll just view it in a new tab and scroll down. And there you go. Really beautiful. So what about the design on mobile and tablet? I'll just quickly go ahead and see how it looks on 
iPhone right now. So I'll just maybe show you the end result because this does look a bit different on mobile. So this is the main result. And as you can see, we have the images just here and here, and they move out to the side when I scroll down on mobile. It's a bit more beautiful on an actual mobile because right now I'm just in a browser. But let's optimize it so it looks like this. I'll go back into Elementor Editor and change it to mobile. So the first thing I want you to do is find the main container, the first container we made. And that's this one. And change this width and height. I'll just change this to 100. And this one to 90 only. And this time the justify content needs to be at the top. And make sure all images are aligned at the center and 100 in width. I'll just do that to all images now. Okay, so now all images are centered and full width. So let's go ahead and publish it and take a look at it. Okay, it's better now, but this text still needs to be more centered because there is not enough space here at the top. So to achieve this, go ahead and find the main content and go into advanced. And then you can see here offset does not have any value. So just type in 24 here and click publish. And let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay, so now you can see we have this image that moves out to the side and the same does this one. And here comes our text. And here is what two more of these showcases. So this is actually exactly what I wanted to achieve on mobile because it's not possible to create the same thing uh, that we have on desktop. And this should actually also just automatically work on iPad. Let me just go ahead or tablet and choose this. Okay, so the only thing is that we have a bit more space here at the top and the bottom, but I think it will work and it should look like desktop on tablet. So let's go back and change it to desktop and see where the problem is. Okay, I think I found it. So this one just needs to be 100 view height. Uh, I think that's it. Let's just publish it. And now it's working.